Hey guys, Danny Johnson here with part two of the 1999 through 2004 Mustang design videos. Uh, if you haven't seen the other one, please check the video description where I'll put a link to that and the other ones that I've made like this for the 99 to 04 Mustangs. And uh, feel free to subscribe and like the videos if you enjoy them. Today we're going to start in 2001 where we left off, where a lot of the changes to the Mustang were simply cosmetic, but there were some uh, drivetrain differences as well. So for the year 2001, uh, Ford switched from the Windsor, Ontario plant in Canada, which was primarily built for uh, building truck engines, and switched over to the Romeo plant. So you did get a slightly different 4.6 liter V8 with the same output, uh, but there were some differences between the two engines. A lot of the changes were minor, and you would probably not even notice like a different uh, water pump pulley, a different number of uh, bolts on the valve covers. And uh, there was internally a few differences with the Windsor engine having an 8-bolt crank and the GT now having the 6-bolt. Uh, but as far as outputs and everything goes, the engines were pretty much the same. Mid-year 2001, there was a change to the transmission. It went from being a T45 5-speed to the TR3650, which appeared about mid-year. And uh, some cars, like the later produced Cobras and the Bullets, all got the TR3650 5-speed. One of the biggest changes cosmetically would be the new headlights. You could see these ones are now somewhat blacked out or darkened in the rear and uh, gave it kind of a smoked look. And so the Ford OEM ones, uh, you can tell, have the Ford logo there. And uh, if you did remember from 1999 and 2000, the headlights were clear, which was a pretty cool thing for the year 2000. A lot of cars were doing that uh, Alteza or Euro look. Uh, the Cobra R, however, in 2000 did get these headlights first, and so a lot of people don't uh, think about that, but the 2000 Cobra R did get uh, these headlights. One of my favorite upgrades for 2001 was the ginormous hood scoop. It is a beautiful hood scoop, and uh, it's basically the same hood as 1999. They just added the hood scoop, and you may recall the spring feature and the 99 35th anniversary did have a scoop, but it was different right here. It didn't drop down. It was actually somewhat flush. So if you want to go back and take a look at that video, I also made one that compares the 35th anniversary to the spring feature, but uh, they definitely had a similar hood scoop, but it wasn't the same. And the same with the raised uh, rear wing. I really like the raised rear wing that they made in 2001. Uh, rather than the attached look in 99 and 2000. And again, this was similar, but it had uh, some different moldings to it than the spring feature of the 35th anniversary. So it was a different wing, um, but uh, you could definitely see it coming from the spring feature and 35th anniversary. Same with the big bulky side scoops, which I really like. It was the same uh, deal where they uh, had it on the spring feature in 99, a similar one. And interestingly enough, the 01 Cobra did not get the bigger side scoops. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, one of the most popular wheel options that came out in 2001, and that is this bullet style, uh, as we also saw on the Bullet GT. Uh, this one shown is actually from 0304 with a darker uh, gray color, but it featured the running po pony on the inside, and uh, you may not have even noticed the difference, but if you look, the uh, 2001 and 2002 wheels are slightly different, uh, which is what we found on the bullet. And I have the whole video for the bullet if you want to see that as well. Inside, you had a little difference in uh, the center console area. You had two bigger cup holder areas instead of the shallow ones from 98 and 99, 2000. And uh, you switched to have the three traction can control buttons here. The defrost, traction control, and fog lights uh, buttons were now three bigger ones there instead of the uh, traction control switch that was uh, in a different location. And uh, the interior lighting was now a lime green. Here's another look in the Mach 1 of that uh, center console with the two different cup holders. And uh, if you do look at these buttons, they are slightly different. In 2001, in the very beginning, uh, they had some different icons. And uh, this is what they look like in, in uh, the later ones. And uh, you got the better single DIN uh, radio. But 2001 was a very important year for Ford as they got the Cobra back since the 2000 
Cobra was canceled due to power output problems, and the 01 Bullet was a very popular hit with a retro theme, which would later lead to the Mach 1, and we can even say the 05 to 09 retro styling to the Mustang. 2002 was a pretty normal year for Ford and the Mustang, apart from the fact that John Cleddy, the chief SVT engineer, again canceled the Ford Mustang Cobra, this time not so much for power output problems, but because he wanted to supercharge the Cobra and turn it into something more special, which would result in the 0304 Cobra. So they did not officially produce any 2002 Mustang Cobras, except for 100 documented four valves that went to Australia. These were basically 2001 models, and if you want to see the information on that, uh, just check the video description, and I'll put a link to that video. For 2003, Ford unveiled another retro throwback. The Bullet was such an instant success that they decided to do it again with the Mach 1. So the Mach 1 Mustang was this time a 32-valve V8, which is what they wanted to put in the Bullet, but SVT was kind of fighting back and forth uh, at the time because the Cobra didn't have uh, much of a different engine, if that were the case. So um, they actually got the 32-valve in the 0304 Mach 1 and uh, were able to do that because they supercharged the Terminator Cobra and were able to kind of separate it a little bit and uh, fill in that gap between the GT and uh, the Terminator. And all 0304 Mach 1s got that awesome shaker hood. And they came with Heritage wheels, which was similar to a bullet wheel, but the throwback to the Mach 1 wheels. So these were called the Heritage wheels, 17 by uh, 8s. And very nice looking wheel for the Mach 1. A few of the Mach 1 styling cues would also become very popular, like the Grill Delete, uh, the Chin Spoiler, which was specifically to the Mach 1 only. And uh, the Mach 1 also looked real good with its hood decal and shaker. And the Mach 1 had really nice side stripes that would go solid and fade into the, into the back. And the Mach 1 was one of the only V8 Mustangs to feature a running pony. Inside, the Mach 1 had a really nice brushed aluminum shift knob and bezel. And also uh, the Mach 1 specific seats with a silver stripe and the bigger headrest for the IUP cars. A silver back in for the gauges and the retro gauges themselves, which were similar to the Bullet, but these ones actually had a higher red line, except for the automatic Mach 1. Uh, the automatic Mach 1 was the first time you could ever get a Mustang with the four valve and an automatic transmission. Uh, because of that, the automatic Mach 1s did not get the forged crank, the forged 8 bolt crank that the 5 speed cars got. And they got a 6 uh, bolt cast crank, and uh, they say that that was to reduce the cost because you were getting an automatic uh, for basically the same price. And um, also it was probably easier to match up the automatic uh, flex plate and other parts that Ford already had for the automatic transmission. Uh, both of the five-speed or automatic had the really nice aluminum pedals, which was a really nice feature. And I have a whole video talking about the interior upgrade package, or IUP, which was really the only option for the Mach 1 other than the automatic transmission. Also, the Mach 1 had specific C-pillars, so you can see here how it kind of cuts downward in a sharp angle compared to the stock one, how it's more rounded. So that's the C-pillar windows and glass, which was the same as the Bullet. The Mach 1 also got a darkened uh, rear wing, just a matte color to match the stripes, uh, same as the regular GT wing otherwise. 2003 was also Ford's 100th anniversary, so as an anniversary edition, Ford created all black cars with a centennial edition. And so the reason they were all black is because in the beginning, Ford painted all of its cars black. And the reasoning behind that was said to be that uh, the black paint dried the fastest and they were doing so much mass production that uh, they wanted the cars drying as quickly as possible. Uh, they even joked around that uh, Henry Ford had said, quote, a customer can have a car painted any color he wants so long as it's black, <laughs> unquote. And so um, with that said, Ford uh, unveiled the Centennial Edition with uh, all black cars. 
Each of these cars came with a really nice keychain and watch set, and so this is what they looked like here. And the package was a $995 upgrade, at least for the Mustang, basically turning it into a premium uh, Mustang GT. And we'll go over some of the specifics here, but just want to show you the watch. And the keychain was pretty much the same as the badge that would appear on the car on both fenders and also on the rear trunk deck lid. And so this is what the badge looked like. It said 100 uh, Centennial Edition, and so it came as a coupe or as a convertible. So this is what the coupe would look like. And here's the convertible. It came with special 17-inch wheels, which were basically the uh, bullet wheels is what it had looked like. And um, the main thing with this car was also the uh, seats, which were very important. So they were two-tone Verona grain Emola leather seats, power lumbar support, leather wrapped steering wheel, and a six-disc CD player. This is what the logo looked like on the seats themselves. Really nice 100 centennial edition. And uh, a lot of these cars appear to be the IUP, or interior upgrade package, with the silver trim and... Uh, uh, leather ref, uh, wrapped sh shift knob and the bigger headrests and uh, door posts. Uh, the seats were that really nice two-tone look as well, which was uh, very attractive. Each car also came with the book, The Ford Century, Ford Motor Company and the Innovations that Shaped the World by Russ Bannum. And in total, there were supposed to be 3,000 of these cars made for the Mustang. They ended up making 2,040 instead. Uh, of those, uh, 717 were coupes and 1,323 were convertibles. In 2003, and also for 2004, the Ford Mustang SVT Cobra, also known as the Terminator Cobra, was released. So this was the first time they supercharged the, the Mustang, and uh, it was one of the best Mustangs ever built, in my opinion, and I'll make a full video about this car and its development as well. It would take uh, a long time to explain it, but basically, uh, this car, uh, in order to meet the production standard and John Coletti's dream to supercharge the Mustang, ended up with a fully forged, uh, complete engine, forged crank, forged pistons, forged uh, connecting rods, and uh, as you can see here, a stock Terminator connecting rod and piston compared to the stock 4.6 liter uh, one. You can tell the massive difference here. In short, the Terminator engine has been known to hold over a thousand horsepower as is without opening it up. So a very impressive car, very strong, and uh, still holding their value very strong today and also holding themselves uh, competitively too. Many people are still racing the Terminator platform. In 2003, the V6 also started to get what was the 99 and 01 Cobra hood, so all of them had that, unless you had the Pony package, which was a really cool package giving you the GT hood scoop, not the side scoops, and then the Stampered Pony going along uh, the bottom of the door. So that was a really cool package for the V6 to give it a little something. And something also to mention for 2004 for the Mustang V6, you may have seen that it went from a 3.8 liter to a 3.9 liter. Uh, that was increased by a slightly larger stroke. The output was still rated the same. And the reason for this is because Ford was switching the V6 over to the overhead cam version for the new body style and they had actually run out of engines for the Mustang and started to use the ones that were also found in the minivan and Ford's other pushrod 3.8 liter lineup. So it's technically a 3.9 liter. 2004 was the 40th anniversary for the Mustang so all Mustangs got this badge except for the SVT Cobra but uh, that does not mean that every car was a 40th anniversary edition car. And so Ford did create a 40th anniversary edition package, and that was uh, featured in crimson red, which was uh, the only way you could get crimson red on the Mustang was in that package. It also uh, came in Oxford white and uh, black. Now, uh, this package involved a few things. It had uh, the gold side stripes, the gold stripes that went over the hood, roof, and uh, down over the trunk. And uh, something else to mention that some people overlook is that this had the export mirrors or the folding mirrors that were paint color matched. And uh, those were the same basically found on the 0304 Cobra. The GT got the 17-inch bullet wheels, but in this golder color, which is actually called Arizona Beige. And then the V6 had a similar uh, wheel package with the 16-inch wheels with that uh, Arizona Beige in the background. 
And all of these cars did not have the rear wing, so if you see it, uh, that's definitely been added on. The interior color on all of them was the parchment to the brown color, and it had the interior upgrade package with the silver bezel down the center, the bigger headrests, the door posts, and the aluminum foot pedals as well. Uh, you could get it as a 5-speed or an automatic for this, and for... Uh, each trim the GT or the V6. Uh, this is also one of the little badges that appear near the center console on pretty much all the interior upgrade package cars for 2004. So here's a quick picture of the brochure that showed uh, the 40th anniversary package. Uh, the top was different, the parchment interior, the interior upgrade package. You had the foot pedals, you had floor mats that said 40th anniversary, the colors that it came in, the black, Oxford white or crimson red, crimson being a specialty for the 40th anniversary package only. And uh, my brother actually has a really good video on this and uh, shows some people who have some 40th anniversary cars. So I'll put the link to that in the video description if you want to see that. So I hope you enjoyed this quick rundown on the 99 through 04 Mustang. And please check out the playlist for the other videos that I've created. And I'll continue to create more. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I know I didn't even scratch the surface on a lot of these with different paint color options and other things. But uh, anyway, check the video description for now and stay tuned for more content. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching.